This is part five in my series on locus of control. Up to this point, we've learned what locus of control is, the biological basis of your need for control, the effect that your perceived locus of control can have on both your physical and emotional health, and how we respond to situations where control is taken from us. In this installment of my series, I'm going to cover the way our brains respond to choices when they are available, and why our need for choice is not always rational. It has to do with a concept called the paradox of choice. In case you forgot or haven't seen my first video on this topic, I want to quickly remind you that the words choice and control are used more or less interchangeably in this series. That's because every choice you make is, by definition, an attempt to exert control over a situation. Your need for choice is not based on a rational calculation where you seek to maximize value as the standard economic theory would have you believe. Research has shown that your brain is not very interested in making choices at all. In fact, it often resists doing so, even finding the process unpleasant at times. Instead, it's more interested in simply having choices. To put it another way, while we prefer and even need to have choices available to us, it doesn't seem to matter whether those choices are meaningful or worth the effort it takes to pursue them. This seems illogical, but it reinforces the concept of the paradox of choice. That's a behavior where we humans prefer situations with a larger number of options versus fewer ones. However, having more choices, ironically, often leads to no decision at all. This pattern of thinking can happen when you get overwhelmed by the options available and can't effectively process all the information, or you get stuck in a psychological loop where you're afraid of making the wrong choice. This dichotomy of wanting more choice but getting worse outcomes when you have it is where the paradox of choice gets its name. Delaying a decision ostensibly delays the pain associated with the potential wrong choice, which is one reason we do it. We also find the decision-making process itself less enjoyable when there is an abundance of options. And we tend to regret our ultimate choice, if we even make one, more than when the options were limited. I've discussed this concept of opportunity cost and the paradox of choice in another video if you want to check it out. In a review of the academic literature discussed in an earlier video, researchers found that when presented with two options, people are naturally drawn to an option if it subsequently gives them another choice. This behavior would make sense if the presence of another choice opened up the possibility of getting more than you could from the original choice alone. However, even when the expected value of both original choices was the same, the paradox of choice led people to still prefer the path that provided a second choice. To test this behavior, researchers conducted a version of the Monty Hall problem, made famous by the 1960s television game show, Let's Make a Deal. They performed a couple different variants of the game. The traditional problem is where a player is presented with three doors. The player is told that there's a prize behind one of the doors, and if he chooses the correct door, he'll win that prize. The contestant then makes an initial selection, but before revealing what's behind that door, the host then opens up one of the other two doors. Because the host knows which door contains the prize, he always opens a door which does not contain the prize. After this reveal, the contestant is then given the option of switching from his original choice to the other remaining door before opening it. The logic is counterintuitive, as evidenced by the fact that most people elect to stay with their initial choice in the original version of the game, even though your odds of winning double by switching to the other unopened door. Another variant of this study, and the one relevant to our discussion of the paradox of choice here, is where they added a fourth door to the mix. That scenario followed the original script until after the host opened one of the unselected doors, revealing no prize. In this variant of the game, the contestant was then presented with the option of either staying with his original choice, just as in the original game, or choosing an option that allowed him to make another choice between the remaining two doors. The probability in this game does favor selecting the option that allows you to make an additional choice. However, the number of people selecting the choose a choice option was far more than can be explained by probability alone. In this variant, if you stay with your original selection, you have a 2 out of 8 chance of winning the prize, whereas you have a 3 out of 8 chance of winning by switching, or a 50% increase. However, in the experiment, 243% more people chose to switch than to stay with their original choice. This result supports the conclusion that humans prefer choice at least partly for the sake of having choices, not because it means they offer additional value. Researchers haven't uncovered the exact mechanism that causes this irrational need for more choice, there are a few different theories, including the avoidance of making a wrong choice that I discussed previously. Another theory is that delaying your decision keeps your options open for as long as possible. 
This approach presumably gives you time to collect more information and more thoroughly consider your options. In reality, however, it often leads to simply delaying any thought about the decision until the deadline approaches or even to missing the deadline entirely. Finally, delaying your decision may be an energy management strategy that allows you to stay in the game essentially with a minimum amount of effort. It's much easier to decide to make a decision at a later time, even if that decision is only a minute or two in the future, than it is to exert the energy necessary to focus and think about the problem right now. As you can see, even though you have a biological need for choice, that need is not driven by rationality. Rather, it's a psychological mechanism for supporting your self-efficacy and locus of control, which in turn supports your mental well-being and overall happiness. This is an important point to remember when you are confronted with situations where you have to make a decision. Because of the paradox of choice, your natural tendency will be to gravitate toward the choice that gives you more options or simply allows you to make an additional choice or two, regardless of the true value of those choices. And while that choice may feel right, it may not be the best one. There's an entire branch of literature on decision-making frameworks and strategies that can help you make better decisions in these situations. That knowledge can come in very handy, especially when there are potentially significant consequences, like with medical or large financial decisions. That's not the focus of this series though, so I'm not gonna delve into that topic here. My intent is simply to make you aware of your inherent desire for choice, the reason it exists, and its drawbacks. In the next video in my series on locus of control, I'll discuss how you can exert control in situations that seem overwhelming or insurmountable and the benefits of doing so. Please check it out. If you like this video or know someone who could benefit from it, please share it with them. If you want to learn more about how you can supercharge your motivation, check out my website by clicking on the Motivation Mindset logo. My goal is to help you with your motivation challenges. If you have a specific problem you'd like help with, you can reach out to me directly at rich at the motivation mindset .com. Thanks for watching.